there, my name's Anna Lorenko, and I'm a co-author on a paper in radiographics on the imaging and management of radial scars and complex sclerosing lesions. And it's my pleasure to say a few words about that publication. So first off, just to give a little bit of background, radial scars and complex sclerosing lesions are benign entities in the breast that have traditionally been considered high-risk lesions and have traditionally gone on to surgical excision when they are identified at core needle biopsy. Many times uh, pathologists will distinguish radial scars and complex sclerosing lesions on the basis of size, um, utilizing radial scar for those less than a centimeter in size and complex scler sclerosing lesions for those greater than a centimeter in size. And what is identified at pathology is a central um, elastotic um, stroma in the center of the lesion and then epithelial and glandular elements radiating outwards in a spoke-like fashion giving the lesion a stellate appearance, which actually matches the imaging manifestation that is most commonly identified quite well. And the most common uh, imaging manifestation that we see is architectural distortion. And as we know, tomosynthesis has identified far more architectural distortions than 2D digital mammography. So we have found ourselves in the breast imaging community in a scenario where we've got this excellent new technology, it's identifying more architectural distortions. It's not possible to determine if the uh, architectural distortion is due to a benign or malignant cause uh, based on imaging appearance alone. And so we need to do a biopsy to evaluate these imaging findings. And then at biopsy, we're identifying many radial scars, as many as a third of tomosynthesis um, guided biopsies that are done for architectural distortion may be uh, due to a radial scar. And radial scars can certainly be associated with other findings, including atypia. Um, those that are associated with atypia most frequently go on to surgical excision to make sure there is not an associated cancer um, at that biopsy site. But we've identified now um, more of these radial scars that are not associated with atypia. And it's really interesting to look at the data as it has evolved and has shown an exceptionally low upgrade rate at surgery for radial scars without atypia. And that is in the range of from zero to just over 2%. And so for those patients with radial scars without atypia, it's very prudent and very reasonable to suggest surgical consultation rather than excision, whereby the surgeon and the patient can discuss additional risk factors for breast cancer, where the patient can be involved in some shared decision making. And for many patients, the best way forward may actually be imaging observation rather than surgical excision for a radial scar without atypia. It's also possible that radial scars can manifest as uh, something other than architectural distortion. Less commonly, they can be seen as a mass or calcifications on tomosynthesis and mammography. Um, frequently, they are not identified at ultrasound, but when they are seen at ultrasound, they often show up as a mass. And for contrast-enhanced studies, both contrast-enhanced mammography and contrast-enhanced breast MRI, they can manifest as enhancing masses or sometimes as enhancing dis distortions. Overall, I think as breast radiologists, we are um, charged with being very uh, careful and very mindful to evaluate the uh, new data as we deploy these new technologies to really look at the data as it unfolds and uh, be mindful to make the best recommendations for our patients. And so in this scenario where we have patients who may have radial scars without atypia identified at um, biopsy, in the absence of other risk factors or other suspicious imaging findings in um, a concordant um, you know, pathology review, it may be best for our patients to um, proceed with imaging follow-up rather than surgical excision to avoid overtreatment. And I thank you again for your attention.